This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Today I'm going to demonstrate pile knitting on a brother machine. We're going to get a fabric with tiny loops, all over loops as a matter of fact. Now this needs to begin with a main bed cast on. So even though I'm using the river, I'm going to drop the river. I'm going to put the main bed needles out into hold and just for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to do an E-wrap cast on. I will start by hanging a clothespin on the end of my yarn, come from between the beds and just do an E-wrap cast on on the main bed only. Before I begin my pile knitting, I need to knit a couple of rows. So I'm just going to put a comb on this to make it easier to get it to knit down. And I'm going to knit a couple of rows. You see I'm on the river arm and I am going to be on tension 3. This is a bulky machine and I have a thin yarn. This is a group 3 sport because this is essentially a full needle rib technique. So I knit a row with the ribber arm. Sometimes it doesn't knit unless you pull the needles out, so I'll do that. And I'm going to just say, well, that's enough. And I'm also going to hang a couple of big weights on this, even though it's not a ribber comb. So I put triangle weight hangers on my comb. It's just an ordinary comb, but I'm putting these big river weight hangers on it. I have this needle arrangement of 15 left to 15 right on the main bed. I'm in half pitch. My river is in 3 8 Half pitch is where your needles go between each other. This is full pitch with your needles matched up and this is half pitch with your needles slipping past each other. We don't want to have any knitting collisions. Now we need to set the carriages for pile knitting. So I am canceling all the buttons, making sure they're both on tension four. I am going to tuck to the left on the main carriage. So I have put in the left tuck button only. I am going to slip to the right on the river. So this is down, this is to the left, this is to the left down here, the slide lever, and this, the PR, is up. That gives me my slip to the right. Now, there's just a few steps to this. It's a little weird, but we're good with weird, right? So first we're going to bring the end needles on the main bed out into hold. Why? Because we don't want them to tuck and our machine has to be on in so it will knit those. And then we're going to go to the left. You'll see that it knitted the end needles on the main bed. It tucked all the others and it also laid yarn in every one of the river needles. Now I knit to the right. Now I'm going to release the loops. To release the loops, I am just going to push this button right here, which releases the river carriage, go to the left, go to the right, click it in again. Now, it's not a bad idea to use something to slip your loops between the beds so they don't catch. So I did that. Now, bring my end needles on the main bed only into hold, knit two rows, release my ribber, and release my loop. Then, slip those loops between the beds and do it again. Knit two, release two, tuck these guys in, and again, knit two, release two, tuck the loops down. I'm using a cut credit card to tuck my loops down. 
you could also use a transfer tool. That'll work okay too. But the credit card is really nice because it's so thin. It goes between the beds really easily. So once again, knit two, release two, and slip the little card through. And I'm going to do some more rows off camera. So how shall I finish this off? I'm just going to do a latched bind off. To do a latched bind off, I need to cancel tuck on my main bed. And I don't need to knit any ribbon needles, so I'm going to push those down out of the way. And then to get it to knit through, it'll knit through better if they're in hold. And finally, I want this to be really loose, so I'm rolling way up to tension 9 and knitting one row slowly across. Then I'm going to cut my yarn and do a loop through a loop bind off. With the yarn cut, I drop the bit. I remove those two heavy weights and the triangle weight hangers. And I put them somewhere other than on the floor where I could step on those nasty little points. And then I'm going to put a ribber cover on my ribber so that it's easier to latch off the main bed stitches. So I'm doing that, bringing my main bed needles out to hold, which makes it also easier to latch off my main bed stitches. A comb and no weights is plenty of weight for latching this off. And then this is just my typical loop through a loop bind off using my latch tool. Which I've showed in a hundred videos, but each time you put the new loop in the hook and the old loop down below the hook and that way it slips right through so easily. Now, when I get almost across, I'm going to do myself a favor and get the comb off. I'm using my fingers to hold the loops and control them for the last few stitches. Or you could hang one claw weight, either way. the last loop, pulling the end through the last loop, tightening that up. Let me push my needles back and let's see what we've got. But check that out. Now I've got a long loop here and I know what happened. The ribber comb caught it. So that's not a good thing. I need to be a little bit more careful with my ribber comb. So I would probably just pull that into the wrong side and I could use this piece. I need to show you just how thick this pile is. See that compared to my finger? That is a lot of pile there. You're getting loops the length of the distance between the beds. You've got a nice finished edge on the bottom that's not going to come undone nice finished edge on the top. It's not going to come undone. It hardly curls at all on the sides, but it curls like crazy on the top and bottom. So I hope you'll make this, experiment with it, and do something amazing.